What's up? I'm Alex from LearnBeachWallFast.com. Earlier on this YouTube channel, I have created a lot of long and in-depth videos about how to learn to handset easier. So if you're someone who's trying to learn to handset in Beach Volleyball and you haven't seen those videos yet, you should probably go and watch them. Anyway, so in the middle of one of those longer videos, there's a little explanation that I make on how to, basically a concept on how to not double contact or lift the ball all in one. And I realized that that concept in itself is worth its own video a little shorter one that's easier for people to find so that's what we're gonna do here in this video all right so handsetting rules the most common two rules that people break when they handset is either the double contact rule or the lifting rule where you're basically carrying the ball too much and these two rules confuse people a lot people quite often have quite big trouble understanding what is a lift what is a double etc 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 I am not a beach volleyball referee, but I have actually taken a referee course. So I have a referee license and I've also coached a lot of people to get handsets that don't get called. So at least I think I know what I'm talking about. But basically one sort of kind of a simple rule of thumb is that once you start touching the ball, if the ball moves in two different directions in your hands, then it's most probably a lift. So there's two different examples of this. One is that you catch the ball and you bring it down, which means it's going downwards in your hands, and then you push it out, which means it's first down, then up. That's two different directions. The other type of uh, example is if you push it out, but then you, as you push, you actually change the direction. So you're sort of... Uh, that would also usually be called as a lift because it's also like this way and then that way. So this basically leaves us with that once the ball starts touching our hands it should only move in one direction and it should do so pretty quickly. So the dilemma then becomes how do we get the softness in our hands and the touch that does make it not a double contact but still only move in one direction and quickly. Is it possible to not move downwards at all before you move out. And this is where we get to the juicy, interesting stuff. So I want you to think about the human body as a machine for a second, as a machine that can produce power into a ball on a handset. So I'll show you some different parts of our body that can produce power. First of all, we have the legs can produce power into the handset. Secondly, we have basically the shoulders and elbows that can do that movement. Then we have the wrists, and then we also have the fingers that can produce movement. So that's our engines for putting power into the ball. So now out of those engines, there's one that's quite distinctly different from the others, which is the last one, the fingers. Because the fingers, basically what they do is in, in inches or centimeters, they give the least of difference, the least of lift. The wrists and the elbows and, and legs produce more length in the lift, basically. Also, the fingers is the only part that's gonna give you the soft touch. The fingers is basically what's gonna make sure that you don't double contact because it's ultimately what's contacting the ball. So what this means is that even though you're technically not allowed to catch the ball and have it in your hands and have it move in two different directions while you're touching it, I'm saying that if all of your other engines or some bigger engines than your fingers are moving outwards, then it will be fine for your fingers to have this little bit of give, this flexion as the ball is landing into your hands. Because even if the ball is landing in your hands and the fingers get pushed down and flexed down, if everything else is moving upwards, that will still produce an outward movement on the ball. So I have a little mental image on how this works. And this mental image includes a basketball hoop and a spider web that I usually tend to try to describe to people. But fittingly enough, a couple days ago, I bought a basketball hoop. Of course, with the right sticker and everything. So I'm actually gonna show in, in real life here how I think this works. So <clears throat> imagine this, this basketball hoop and imagine this net would, instead of this basketball net, it's actually a spider web that, that, that is flat like this. And a spider web has a little, like a bounce to it. 
I guess it's it has some elasticity to it and and also like it drags out and then pushes out again actually let me tie this together okay now we actually have something that's very similar to what I have in mind so this here it's like a trampoline basically so the flexion in the net is basically the equivalent of the flexion in your fingers and the rim moving up is basically your hands moving up with the help of your wrists, elbows, shoulders and legs. So basically what you want to do when you handset to avoid both lifts and doubles is to start moving the arms upward before the ball touches the fingers and then so the whole thing moves upwards and then the fingers flex down and start bringing the ball with and then then it releases and you see here that if I move this rim upwards fast enough the total of the ball is still gonna move upwards even though the net flexes down and making your hands work like this mental image is basically what's gonna allow you to be able to both not lift and not double at the same time this is also why it's possible to handset spinning balls and handset them with no spin when it comes out because there is some flexion in your fingers that takes the spin away Okay, cool. Thanks for watching. Hope it was insightful and hope it helps with your handsets. And as I said before, there's a lot of more videos on my YouTube channel about handsetting that you should really watch if you are interested in learning how to handset. You might have noticed that I have a little bit of a different style than most people. I tend to go a little bit more into details and stuff like that, which a lot of people have actually really liked. And that's definitely the case with my handsetting videos that I have made so far. The funny thing is that I'm gonna make courses later that will be even more in depth. So, so if I would compare, if this is what other people do in terms of details, this is what my YouTube videos do. And then later the courses I'll create will be like, like that. <laughs> so if you're really, really, really interested in, in learning how to handset well, there's gonna be a lot, a lot, a lot more content coming out in this project as a whole in the future. So what does that mean? Maybe it's a good idea to subscribe to the channel. Maybe it's a good idea to join my Facebook group. Maybe join my email newsletter because you'll get better deals for the courses that way. And of course, share this video to a friend because the faster this project grows, the faster I'll be able to produce all of these videos for you guys. All right, see you in the next one.